Team, come on. I know they're kicking our butts, but we got this. Is that MJ? It's Michael, guys. Michael. Uh-uh. Nope. Sorry. It is a very long video. So many Easter eggs to find. No time for a cringy intro. Get to it, fat boy. You heard the man. So many Easter eggs to get to from Space Jam New Legacy. So let's just dive into it. Some things off the bat, though. The winner of the Funko Pop giveaway from my review video is Craig Smalls. I've already packed those pops up, have them ready to go, and contacted you about how to receive them. And to keep spreading the love since I had so much fun with Space Jam New Legacy, I'll be giving three people in this video Toon Squad outfits from the new movie, just like me. Echalo, miralo, chingo. All you have to do is like, subscribe, and comment down below, and three lucky people will get this. All right, but with Space Jam New Legacy, I'm gonna be diving into all the Easter eggs and details you might have missed because if you've seen the movie, you know there are like thousands of things you could catch at the blink of an eye. Sometimes it's even distracting. So I'm gonna do my best to go through every Easter egg that I caught in this movie, but no doubt I am gonna miss a ton because there are just so many in here. I'm also only gonna be focusing on Easter eggs that were not shown off in the trailer. So if I don't mention some obvious ones that we've been seeing for months, like the mask or all the Batman forever characters and stuff like that, it's because we've already seen that. Let's focus on the thing that they hid from us and didn't show us in the trailer. Okay, so jumping right into it, the opening of the movie is almost identical to how the original Space Jam opened with a younger version of our starring athlete about to play basketball and set history with becoming a very famous athlete. Gotta admit the original Space Jam did that way better, but still he gets handed a Game Boy that has the game Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle from 1989. That is a real video game and just goes to show you early on how LeBron is familiar with the Looney Tune characters. From there, we also are treated to a montage of LeBron's life and career in the same way we got MJ's montage in the first Space Jam movie. Fast forwarding to a little deeper into the movie when we finally get to the Warner Brothers lot where they really show off some of the movies that they have made and have upcoming like we saw Scoob, the Teen Titans go to the movies poster, we even have the new up and coming Suicide Squad poster next to Aquaman and even the Tom and Jerry movie. But LeBron James shows up to Warner Brothers because they have a pitch for him that their algorithm created thinking it would be a great idea for a movie and this isn't so much as an easter egg as as this is actually reality. If you didn't know, Warner Brothers and other studios actually do have an algorithm like this to let them know what movies they should be making based on the performances of past films. So even though this is an exaggerated take with someone like Don Cheadle as the villain Algie Rhythm, this is a real thing that Hollywood is doing right now. But this algorithm also shows off the movies in their library and while you can see a lot of Warner Brothers movies, the one most important to me is the original Space Jam. So that movie does exist as a film in this universe. We then get to see him show off what LeBron could look like in their movie sphere by turning him into a version of Mr. Freeze against Batman, also throwing him in the Game of Thrones world, the Harry Potter universe of course. In the actual physical meeting room of Warner Brothers though we do get some statues in the background. You could see people like Batman, Gizmo from Gremlins, The Lion from The Wizard of Oz, Dot from Animaniacs, and Marvin the Martian. Funny enough they use these statues again in the hallway and just reuse these props. When LeBron James is finally abducted into the virtual world and gets tossed around the different planets, some of the new ones that we see is of course we have the Game of Thrones planet, but then he quickly zips by and then you get to see off in the distance the planet for the Jetsons. You can obviously tell this is the Jetsons planet because of the buildings and how high they are from the ground, just like in the Jetsons cartoon. He goes by the planet that has the old black and white movies like Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon. I gotta admit, I tried my hardest trying to figure out what planet this was exactly. I was stuck between whether this was Krypton or maybe the planet for the mask, but you guys are gonna have to let me know what you think this planet is. He also passes by the Harry Potter planet because we obviously see Hogwarts. Moving on to a film crew planet who makes the movies, then you also have the Wizard of Oz, and off here to the side, you have the Flintstones planet. Probably a really cool detail is when he passes through the Matrix planet, we get to see the red and blue pill. If you've seen the Matrix movie, you know that's a question Neo gets asked in it. If he wants to be part of the Matrix, he has to take the red or the blue pill. When LeBron James finally lands on the Looney Tunes planet, he leaves behind the Nike symbol and that is because this movie is sponsored by Nike and even LeBron James himself does work with Nike from time to time. Fun fact, a lot of athletes that LeBron wanted to be part of this movie could not because they had contractual obligations to other shoe companies and since Nike is working on Space Jam, it was a conflict of interest. But here in the Looney Tunes planet, we get a whole bunch of references to past Looney Tune episodes that again, is just gonna be way too crazy if I go into every detail. So just the ones that really stick out to me is one, we have an X symbol that represented Planet X. This was part of a lot of Duck Dodge 
Dodger episodes. We also have the Mexican Village for Speedy Gonzalez in the background. Obviously the desert or the Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner episodes. You also even have a sign that says Singing Frog. This is a reference to Michigan J. Frog who sings one of my favorite Looney Tunes songs. Hello my baby, hello my honey, hello my rag. I actually have that pop. There you go Mr. Michigan J. Frog. We also have the barn that would show up in episodes with Froghorn Leghorn. There is this like Broadway theater in the background at one point and it's all episodes that included Bugs Bunny as this opera conductor. And even the names of the episodes are on the posters with Baton Bunny. Leading to what was probably everyone's favorite Easter egg in this movie is when LeBron is doing the famous rabbit season, duck season thing with Bugs Bunny, Bugs Bunny turns into the infamous meme Big Chungus. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this was something that happened in an old Bugs Bunny cartoon. But years later, meme culture would turn that into Chungus and would become an internet phenomenon, similar to how Uganda Knuckles is an internet phenomenon. As they go through some wild events, we have LeBron James turning into a basketball. Now, maybe this might not be an Easter egg, but I found it very similar to when Michael Jordan also turned into a basketball in the original Space Jam. When Bugs Bunny and LeBron James are in a barbershop, this is also a reference to a famous Bugs Bunny skit that would happen every now and then where he would give Elmer Fudd haircuts. You even see one of those haircuts hung up on the wall. They even go ahead and pay respects to different versions of Looney Tunes cartoons like the modern day 2011 Looney Tune cartoon that showed up on Cartoon Network. That's the artist rendition for Yosemite Sam. So that's kind of nice that they're proud of all their Looney Tune incarnations. When Bugs Bunny is telling the heartbreaking story of how all his friends left the planet, I like how you can see Bugs turning some ordinary plants into famous characters like we see here a cactus got turned into Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner in the back made out of beets and a watermelon. This was honestly the part of the movie that actually almost got me into tears and I wish they focused on more is how lonely Bugs felt and how much he missed his friends. And right before Bugs and LeBron steal the ship, Marvin wants to zap them away and we get a fun little pun here of Charles Ray. And if you put that in the correct order, it should be Ray Charles, legendary blind musician. So I think if he hit you with the Charles Ray, you would end up going blind, but maybe you'd play an instrument really well. As that's happening, we cut back to Dom and Don Cheadle's character and he starts to impersonate Steve Jobs, even replicating the genius bar that you would find in Apple stores. When Bugs Bunny is in Marvin the Martian's ship, he replicates the voice of Captain Kirk from Star Trek. Bugs Bunny is rounding up the team he needs, the Toon Squad. I love how they're all wearing their iconic jerseys from the original movie, and the sad look on Bugs Bunny's face to just want to be reunited with them. Here's where the movie started having some fun with the Warner Brother IPs and going into the movie universes. The first one they physically go into is the DC planet, and right before heading in, you can see the Justice League League Watchtower, but instead of focusing on some of the live action movies, they're more focused on the animated counterparts for DC, because as we see, this runaway train passes by famous characters in the DC animated universe like Superman as Clark Kent, then you have Jim Gordon there, you also have Dick Grayson in his regular citizen clothes, but at this point he's actually Nightwing, he's also about to save Selina Kyle Catwoman, we also get a look at Jimmy Olsen, a Superman character, other characters actually inside this train, we see Alfred, along with with Harley Quinn before she finally goes full crazy with the Joker and is still a psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum and Lois Lane right next to them. They also go flying by some famous animated DC locations like the Batman animated series with the iconic red sky and police blimps, Atlantis smashing through Superman's Fortress of Solitude before finally Superman himself stops the train and then we get something that made me smile so big, the Justice League but specifically the Justice League from the animated series Green Lantern, The Flash, and Aquaman before his hand gets chopped off and Batman animated series Batgirl. From there the movie decides to montage to other famous Warner Brothers scenes like the Mad Max movies. Now they didn't actually film this stuff. What they actually did is just took scenes from the movie and then animated in the Looney Tune characters but I do like here how Wile E. Coyote does the spray mouth thing that a lot of the characters were doing in Mad Max. I think that's why I enjoyed these scenes and I didn't see them as one big commercial because I understood all the references and inside jokes. We then go to the Austin Power movies that man they need to make an Austin Powers 4 I'm hoping that's why they showed him off here where Elmer Fudd is playing the role of mini me which kind of suits him well he does look like a mini Dr. Evil and you also had Sylvester the cat being the naked evil cat for Dr. Evil that was really funny now one you might not think is all that interesting when we get to the Casablanca scene where they go ahead and rescue Yosemite Sam this was actually meant to be the scene for Pepe Le Pew but they deleted him out of the movie in hopes that the movie wouldn't get cancelled even though before this movie got released 
release, it went through dozens of controversies. The original scene was Pepe Le Pew was hitting on a woman, then LeBron James and Bugs Bunny would sit him down and go, hey, you need to respect women, you can't do that. And another Looney Tune character that we're supposed to find in here was Penelope Pussycat, who is usually the person getting harassed by Pepe Le Pew, but since they removed Pepe, they also removed the pussy. And that really sucks, because I was looking forward to Penelope having her moment to shine. She was even on posters and merchandise. Another top tier Easter egg here is when they find the Tasmanian Devil, we come to see that he was hand delivered by Rick and Morty. That's a modern day Easter egg I was not expecting to see, but they are Warner Brothers characters since they are on the Cartoon Network channel and that's owned by Warner Brothers. I like how the Tasmanian Devil was even too wild for Rick and Morty and if you've seen the stuff they go through, man, Tasmanian Devil must be crazy. Another movie scene that was edited to include Looney Tune characters is this scene from The Matrix where Granny is playing the role of Trinity. When LeBron James and Bugs Bunny come in, you see Bugs wearing the Morbius outfit that Lawrence Fishburne wore. And just one more time for good measure, this awesome line delivery. Hey, Granny. Speedy. Then they go to find their big star player, Lola Bunny, who has been hiding out in Themyscira for years, training to officially become an Amazon. This scene really reminded me of the opening of Wonder Woman 1984, where Diana as a kid also went through the same obstacle course. We even get the iconic Wonder Woman theme that I wish I could play, but then the video would be copyrighted. And one Easter egg maybe not a lot of people notice is when Bugs is finally crying out for help for Lola, it's a callback to the way he asked Michael Jordan for help in the original Space Jam. What I'm trying to say is, we need your help! Before the big game starts, we see Bugs Bunny turn into MC Hammer, which I'm sure is a very timely reference for the children today. Don Cheeto goes ahead and calls the crowd that'll be half the audience that is just filled with these dregs and... Okay, here we go. First off, we see the mystery machine being driven by Scoob characters. Now, these are specifically the models from the new Scoob movie. Surrounded by them, we see dinosaurs from the Flintstones, along with characters from Wonder Woman and the movie 300, so a couple of Spartans. The Iron Giant comes stepping in. Obviously, if you have a movie showing off all your IPs, Iron Giant has to be part of it. We see a castle that says Evil Scientist on it. This is actually where Gosmer comes from. That is the big red fluffy monster on the Toon Squad. And these guys weren't here in the trailer, but they added on a couple of Harry Potter characters. They just zoom by flying on their broom. We obviously get the dragon from Game of Thrones in the background. Characters from the movie Smallfoot. King Kong comes in to join the party along with the airplane he fights with at the end of his classic movie. We have the great Gazo popping into frame. This was a character later added to the Flintstones cartoon. We also have Dick Dastardly's dog trying to hit him, Muttley. We have Hanna-Barbera character Jabberjaw, Yogi Bear with Boo Boo right behind him. We have Flintstone characters here. We have Megilla Gorilla on his unicycle. The Jetsons in their famous car in the background. We also have Captain Caveman swooping in. We saw him in the latest Scoob movie. You have Chitara from the Thundercats and even the Animaniacs here in the background running in to get their seats. I also absolutely love how they threw in the evil gremlins in here wearing the 3D glasses and Santa hat like they do in their movies. But then when they're finally seated around the court, then it becomes impossible to find every single one. So just getting to the ones I know, and if there's any that you guys know that I don't, let me know down below with timestamps on where they are. We have Game of Thrones characters right here up front. The monkeys from Wizard of Oz. Agent Smith from the Matrix movies. Of course, everyone's favorite and was hoping would get a lot more screen time. Pennywise with his red balloon. I even did my best to find all four versions of the Joker, but in here in the crowd, I think there's only two versions. The one from the 60s series that was played by Cesar Romero and Jack Nicholson's Joker from 1989 did not find Heath Ledger or Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Every time we cut to Don Cheadle's spot, he's surrounded by characters like the Penguin. Really like how they actually gave this extra the makeup like Danny DeVito. Mr. Freeze from Batman Forever. I like how when we get a closer look of the character playing the mask, it looks like he was supposed to be the referee because he's wearing a referee outfit with a whistle. That would have worked perfectly because he's the only person in the audience that is both a cartoon character character but a human. LeBron James at one point even gets knocked out and Tweety Bird surrounds his head. The exact same thing happened to Michael Jordan in the original Space Jam movie and behind him you see the 60s version of Robin that was played by Burt Ward and Batman from the 60s that was played by Adam West. Even both versions of Catwoman, one from the 60s series and the other one from Batman Returns. At one point we even get to see Dorothy as part of the crowd along with Monty Python characters, a couple of Hogwarts characters from Harry Potter. You can also see Voldemort very clearly 
clearly here. Goon characters from the Batman 1989 movie that were minions of Jack Nicholson's Joker. You can see the Joker logo on their jackets and I believe that's supposed to be Trinity from the Matrix. You even have a character that I believe is supposed to be Will Smith from the movie Wild Wild West because he has the cowboy outfit, the facial hair, and the steampunk gun. In the game we also have LeBron James and Lola Bunny recreating a famous photo that was taken of LeBron James. This will probably be the only sports easter egg you'll get out of me. Sorry, I just don't know that much about sports. We get the Wicked Witch of the West standing next to Pennywise. I like to believe that maybe they're on a date right now. When Chrono steps into frame, we can see other characters in here like the Clockwork Orange characters, Captain Falcon, and Dynomutt. When Chronos goes ahead and makes the basket, we get a personal favorite easter egg of mine, and that's the DeLorean from Back to the Future, even the license plates saying Back to the Bucket. This was a funny one to me because Back to the Future is a universal property, not Warner Brothers, so I wonder how they got that into the movie. Another legendary easter egg is we get the villains from the original Space Jam, and that is the Monstars. Funny enough, they're cheering for the opposite team, so they want the Looney Tunes to lose, which is kind of weird because by the end of the first Space Jam, they were friends with the Looney Tunes. During halftime, we get a really clever easter egg that was pumping me up, getting me excited like no way they actually got Michael Jordan to be in the movie for a little bit. They even double tricked me because I know those are the Michael Jordan shoes that they showed off in the original Space Jam, but no, it was Michael B. Jordan and heck, I can't even be mad at that. That's a really funny and clever Easter egg. But just so the Looney Tunes aren't that disappointed, Michael B. Jordan tries to give them a speech and this is a reference to the movie Friday Night Lights where he says clear eyes, full hearts can't lose. Bringing us to when Dom decides to turn on Don Cheadle and join the Toon Squad, he quotes the movie Training Day and says King Kong ain't got nothing on me hurting my boy Harry Cheeks' feelings but also that isn't the correct line because this is a PG movie they couldn't say the exact line which was King Kong ain't got shit on me Come on, Space Jam, if you're gonna hurt my boy Harry Cheeks, do it the right way. From there, the Toon Squad obviously wins the big game, and I'm about to become a huge little baby bursting into tears because Bugs Bunny was sacrificing himself for his friends. Come on, you ain't a real Looney Tunes friend unless that was hitting you in the heart. And then the final Easter egg of the movie is a personal one. If you're a big LeBron James fan, you know if you follow him on Instagram, he always does Taco Tuesday, and here he says, Oh, hey, can I stay for Taco Tuesday? Taco Tuesday, no doubt. No, okay, that, that can't be the final easter egg here i gotta find something else we get hints to previous space jam movies that never got made like when we see tweety and sylvester skating as a reference to skate jam that was supposed to happen with tony hawk lola bunny and bugs in a car for race jam that was also supposed to happen with jeff gordon nascar driver i don't know if this was ever a thing but i found it funny you have granny and ronda rousey when i guess what would have been fight jam even bill murray who was in the original space jam movie showing up here just a little bit to promote Golf Jam with Bugs Bunny. Those are the Easter eggs that really stuck out to me in Space Jam and New Legacy. Like I said, I know there's probably a ton that I missed that you guys are screaming me at in the comment section. Well, good, let me know. But don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget, give away for three lucky individuals who want to win a Toon Squad outfit. Just like, subscribe, and let me know down below. But as always, my name's Chris. Take care.